Hey, qué rollo, quiero mandar un saludo a mi amigo Goodfella, de parte de tu amigo Jaime Munguía. Un abrazo, que no Ánimo. All right, Brian Castano says after you get done with Earl Spence that he wants to go up and fight. Uh, I get done with Jamil Charlie. He wants to go up and fight Earl Spence. Okay, thumbs up the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, next subscribe button, hit the bell icon button, uh, hit all notifications, increase chance, get notifications, you go live or drop a video. So, um, Charlo saying that. I was just being superstar Jamel Charlo doing it the old school way right now. So, yeah, they said the first fight that Charlo ain't trained. You know, I heard that, you know, it's like real close to that situation. They said he didn't train. Okay. So that's one part of the reason I believe it too. I think he has just had a new child as well. So I ain't making no excuses for him. Like I said, I love uh, the fighter Jamel Charlo. Now all that other shit he do outside the ring, I'm good on that. But as a fighter, he badass. So. I don't, I don't really mind rooting for the fighter, bro, because he'll fight anybody, anytime, any place, and that's what I respect about him. And people was picking Lubin over him, and I just didn't, I didn't see why, you know. And uh, he, 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 he's a, he's a savage in that ring, you know what I'm saying, you know. And you know, when you get that money, sometimes it go to your head, but it's undisputed. Maybe he, I think, part of him overlooked Brian, uh, Brian Castanos. That's what I think. I think part of him overlooked him. And, uh, you know, you, you can't do that. You can't overlook somebody like that, bro, especially when he got issues with pressure. You know, maybe he thought he was going to knock him out. But, you know, looking at that Lara fight, you could say, you know, it was a draw. A lot of people thought he won that fight. So, you know, if he can back Lara up and put a Lara on the ropes like that, you could probably say, well, Lara was getting old, this, that, and third. Charlo just got issues with pressure. That's the God honest truth. He got issues with pressure. You know? And it's always been that way. Rosado, um, Vanis Montrosian, John Jackson. We can go on and on about it, but for the most part, you know, it's a great fight this weekend. Like I said, we got four major fight cards this weekend. You got the trailer car with Kovalev and the Puad brothers on there. Kovalev and Cruiserweight. And then you got the uh, Floyd Mayweather car in Dubai. And then you got Gilberto Ramirez. So it's three main cars, excuse me, this weekend, not four or three. So but Ryan Castanos welcomes Earl Spence fight at 54. If he moves up, I'll be waiting for him. Now, it's kind of a little backstory here, too. He said that Earl, he said that he dropped and stopped Earl Spence in the amateurs and Spence said it wasn't true, but he said he dropped him like I think he said he dropped him like three times. That's what I think he said. I think he said he dropped him like three times. You know, I think he said he dropped him like three times. And Earl Spence, you know, and the Ugas build up said it wasn't true. Now, like I said, I heard people talking about they ain't lost, never lost in the amateurs. And somebody said that, that I seen you lost three times. Talking about you never lost. It is what it is. So, if you didn't know, Castanos and Charlo rematch is Saturday in uh, the Stub Hub, well, the, the Dignity Health Center in California. Brian Castanos apparently can't uh, wait for the day he can hang another win over Errol Spence. He said the WBO 154 pound Tyler from Argentina has a rare distinction of having defeated Spence in the newly crowned three belt WCWA IBF welterweight champion, albeit it has back, it was back. When they were both in the amateur circuit, Stanos had suggested that the fight was not all that close, claiming in previous interviews that he forced the referee to issue two counts towards Spence. Whatever the case was with their long their long fight and unpaid ranks, their reprises professionals would make up for a fascinating matchup. As eager Castanos, uh, as an eager Castanos himself noted recently. So this wrote by Sean Nam. Um he said, I fought Earl Spence, and I beat him in the American tournament in Venezuela. Castanos told KL Sports, quote, I think the professionals is something else. But, quote, but, yeah, I won. I'm waiting for the day we can make that fight with Spence for a rematch at the professional level. He said, of course, Castanos 17 no two draws, 12 KOs, is, uh, has quite a bit on his plate at the moment. He is currently preparing for his rematch against WBC, IBF, WBA, Tyler's Jamil Tyler, 34-1-1 and 18 KOs as it happens, as training uh, stable mate 
of Spence on May 14th at the Dignity Health Sports and Park uh, in Carson, California. Their highly competitive first meeting last year was held at the AT&T Center, and San Antonio ended up being a draw. But he goes on to say, you know, should Castellanos be Charlo and Unified 154 power division? Spence defeat Crawford, which I heard that ain't happening, but I say things change. A Spence Castellanos fight may be even uh, be considered uh, to be the next logical step for both fighters if it helps from a negotiating standpoint. Both operate under the uh, banner of Premier Box Champions. Quote If he moves up, I'll be waiting for him. Castellanos said, a Spence, I'll challenge him. I hope he accepts. But the first thing first, first, I have to have a war. With Jamil Charlo. So, I mean, I don't think he could beat Charlo, no, honestly. Um, I think Charlo training, I think he focused, and I think Charlo probably jump right on him and get him out of there. That's just that's just my opinion. Um so I don't I don't really I don't really see him beating him. You know, I just don't see I don't see him being able to do nothing enough. Pulled out the first original fight uh with a bicep injury. Because you know, the biceps, you know, healed that fast. I don't know. Maybe he was off weight. Maybe he celebrated too much. I just don't see him. I don't really see him doing much. Um, I don't. I don't see him doing much. So that's just my opinion. Uh, you know, I just see Charlo. You know, had he trained the first time, this probably definitely would have been an easy fight for him. So. Like I said, the first time they had floor tickets, tickets for $250. The only reason they redoing they're doing this again because they didn't get a clear winner, you know. And uh and like I man, you know, I said before, this ain't a fight that make a lot of business sense for PBC because it didn't sell the first time. They had $250 floor seats. I thought everything was bigger in Texas. They take it to L.A., which it probably more than likely should have been, been at the Barclays Centers. They take it to L.A., and it ain't doing well. But as far as before we get to that point, as far as Spence and Castanos, I mean, it'd be for all the belts, but he got mandatory coming up. So it's probably going to be a unif- it'd probably be a unification by the uh, Castanos standpoint. He probably dropped the WBO. Um, he probably dropped the WBO. He might drop. I don't know the IBF. He may just defend the WBC. He might just defend the WBC, WBC and the WBA. So I don't really see, you know, I don't really see him fighting for undisputed. I think if Spence beat him, he would have to come back, fight Tim Zhu, and then pick up probably the IBF again to be undisputed. So unless Al Hamer can put Tim Zhu on hold, apparently Tim Zhu hurt his hand. He might have some hand operation or have to heal his hand. So. I don't know, you know, but if they, you know, if they put him in there with Castano suspense and they can get it for undisputed, so be it. I told y'all what I heard about Al, and I heard it came right from Spence's mouth. He already trying to do damage control, and people saying, well, you, you know, you, you're making up stuff fine. I ain't, like, putting a pistol to your head to believe what, believe what I say. Like I said, Spence was in that original uh, Canelo deal, and I said that, you know, last year before it got, it popped out. So I said a lot of things that be right on point, a lot of things that I say, It'd be on point. Other stuff, it just change. You know, just change. Like I said before, man, you know, it is what it is. I don't, like I said, I don't care what people think, but because I ain't got no reason to lie. But at the same time, you know, they talking about a September date, a September 24th date, talking about a November date. I mean, we at the point where, you know, Crawford still said he ain't got no contract. They've been negotiating before the Ugas fight. They stopped negotiations before. I don't can't remember how long it was before the Ugas fight. Um, and they started negotiations after the Ugas fight again. I just didn't understand Terrence Crawford team tactics. And when they told me we're going to start the negotiations after the fight, I'm like, bro, he's going to have three belts. And Spence said he's willing to give 60 40, you know. Bud stuck on 50 50. Al Heyman stuck on 80 20. So, like I said before, Al Heyman don't want the fight, you know. And it could be Spence lying on Al Heyman, but I, I believe what he's saying. I believe what he's saying. I think I think he want to fight, but you know, I already told y'all they already been pushing Keith Thurman. He been saying nah, but you know if he do fight Keith Thurman or fight Spence, and then you know or maybe go right into his Thanos fight sometime this year, or maybe get a tune up at fifty four. At this point, like I said before, it's a good fight, but I stream, I'm streaming this. I don't care if it's on regular Showtime or not. Showtime ain't got shit to offer no way. It's a good fight. You know the thing about it is. He ain't bigger than Spence as far as, you know, height and stature. 
But he might be, he might, I think Smith's going up spot seven pounds, 10 ounce glove. It's gonna be an adjustment. But that's that's a great fight. That's a great fight. And I if Spence can keep him in the middle of the ring or push Castanos back, he's gonna be a problem at 54. You know, but you know, Castanos be getting the same style. So Castanos gonna have he do somehow be Charlo. He's gonna have two cracks at, at that style. And that's gonna better. And he already fought Spence and that's a while ago, but he already fought that style three times. One of the amateurs, two times come Saturday if we go through. You know, and even if he lose, you know what I'm saying? Charlo move up. I heard Charlo, you know, Charlo, Errol Alley never do on Charlo Spence. No way. He still may have to see Castanos again. So, like I said before, it's a good style. I mean, you know, he might to come forward and bang. Castanos like to come back forward and bang. The different with Castanos, he going to see somebody that give him head movement, that Sean, that they gave him, going to give him the head movement similar to what Sean gave him. But I think his head movement is more educated. I think the way he get leverage on the shots is more educated. Um, so like I said before, it's a difficult fight. It's a difficult fight, you know, and it's tough. It just depends how you go up, how you deal with the, the gloves being two ounces. They say you spar bigger guys. I don't be really reading, reading to it, but like I said, one thing about, uh, Castano that he going to get that he not going to get for Charlo is Spence going to throw a jab. So he's just not going to be able to walk in on Spence without getting to a jab, but if he take the Spence jab or get inside Spence jab or take, you know, or take it away, probably be Spence. But, you know, like I said before, Spence going to jab. He's going to throw a really good sharp jab out there. And with Spence had to make some adjustments going to 54, yeah, I think it's some adjustments being made. There are just probably slight adjustments. You know, I think throwing more, I think taking something off his shots, throwing more for speed, using his speed, you know, but it's a good weight class. And, you look at the you look at the weight class and you say, well, you know, you got some big guys there like Fondor, Tony Harrison, uh, Tim Zhu is solid. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, your your Velmas Gomez is the dark horse in the division. He should stay away from him because your Velmas Gomez probably beat him today. Um, I believe you know, y'all can probably say I'm hating. Your Velmas Gomez probably get Crawford. He probably beat Crawford. It'd be a good fight between him and Crawford. I mean, I mean, even Spence would be a good fight, but, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if you beat Ethan Orr. He just isn't somebody that nobody don't know about, but, you know, he's Cuban. So, like I said before, some tall guys there, man. Liam Smith, a big guy, you know, but like I said before, that's a good fight. You know, it'd be, you know, for unification, maybe undisputed, but it is what it is. But let's talk about these tickets. Colors, 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 colors. <laughs> I am up. <laughs> Look into this. Uh, pull this up. Blue, my boy. Blue, blue, my boy. Blue. Now this is the Castanos and Charlo fight, May fourteenth. It started at two p.m. It's at the Dignity Health uh, Health Sports Park Tennis Stadium. It's not the big one, not where the Chargers is playing at. It's the tennis park. So let me pull up the. Uh, let me pull up the uh the tennis park. This in Carson falls into LA County. Uh well, they, like last week, they said it was uh 75% of the tickets available. This is shades. <laughs> this is shades of uh of Sean Porter and Ugas when they was giving all tickets. So, you know, like I said before, um so this was broke ground 2002. It opened, uh, I guess it opened in 2021. It said it was a uh, 150 million full complex. Uh, tennis on the LA Women's Tennis Championship, Davis Cup USA versus Croatia. This was back in 2005. They no longer hold the LA Women's Tennis Championship no more. 2009, 2010. It holds. Uh, can we see this? Hold on. You know, I don't know. It holds eight thousand for tennis, nine thousand for boxing. <laughs> They're gonna be begging people to come in here. The record capacity is set at eleven thousand one hundred sixty-eight. Set on May seventeenth, two thousand sixteen, for the Bernie Sanders rally campaign. I don't like Charlie gonna get close to that, <laughs> even if they can't expand it by three. All right. So you see, it's the Denny Health Sports Park Tennis Center in Carson, L.A., Los Angeles, California, United States. 
So the soccer stadium, which is home, always home to the LA, 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 LA Galaxy of the Major League spot, MLS. I don't see them as a tenant, but they play there, I guess. You know, so it's a soccer stadium. So, so, so basically, you know, ain't nobody coming. That's what happened when you disrespect your fans. Ain't nobody coming out there. Nobody got time for you. Oh, look at all this blue. What you want to pick? What you want to do? What you want to do? Blue everywhere. Look at this. I'm free falling. <laughs> and them tickets that's probably bought probably like a handful of fans and, and resale tickets. Which they ain't getting no resale in this, man. Look at this. The floor are gone. That's because Al Hammond has sold the floor. Resale ticket. No, yeah, this is a resale ticket. This is because Al Hammond has sold the floor. <laughs> Come on, man. that's gonna be a fan. Oh, his own his old family is gonna be around there. This bitch fool. See, this happens when you disrespect your fans, Charlo. This happens when you disrespect your fans, man. This is what happened. This happens when you disrespect your fans. And the floor ticket is three hundred dollars. So the LA price is going up on resale. You want to get on the flow? That's in three seventy five for resale. Close, you could pay five hundred to be close. I don't know why you want to be close. You know, so uh, so four fifty, four fifty. So they just trying to resell, and this and this and this event ain't selling. You want to sit right here? Fifty bucks to get in. The fifty ball. Right here, a hundred. Same fucking. Well, this at an angle. That's why. Want to sit up close? Two hundred to sit up, man. Nobody paying them prices for that. You got a price too high. Two hundred. They don't give away a lot of these tickets, you know. They gonna have homeless people up in there. They gonna have, you know, public school up in there. One fifty. They gonna have high school graduations up in there. Nobody paying. I'm paying no two hundred dollars to see, man. In L.A., you can stand that on some sticky icky. You know what I'm saying? You go to Venice Beach and have some fun. Shit, two hundred dollars get you a nice little dinner in L.A. And they got resale tickets up there, man. Get out of here, man. So ain't no, ain't nobody got time for them. But let me know what you girls and guys think. Thumbs up the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, the subscribe button, it's the bell icon button, hit on notification, increase your chance, get notification. We go live, drop the video. Financially, you want to support the channel? Cash up, dollar sign, CJ Good three one three, Venmo CJ Good three one three, PayPal in the description. Thanks for the donate, thumbs up the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, subscribe button, subscribe like, comment button. Financially, you want to support the channel, cash app, dollar sign, CJ Good 313, Venmo, CJ Good 313, PayPal link in the description. Thanks for the donate, thumbs up the video, share the video, um, hit the bell icon button, hit all notifications, future chance, get notifications, we go live, drop a video.